Soviets and Soviets, how y'all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Ring Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we take a step away from Batebs East to bring you to Orsha North. So we're traveling away slowly around the Compass Rose to bring you another 2v2. And Rang, we don't have two of the same thing anymore. Who's duking out with these terrible twosomes? On the left hand side in blue, a Rehas Water has 78th Sturm, with Balanced Income. And Mickey has 20th Panda, with Vanguard Income. And on the right hand side, player is playing as 29th, Rear Balanced Income. And Comrade playing as 26th Guards, Rear Juggernaut Income. Indeed. So. We talked about the fact that the tw that the 26th with Juggernaut income. Does that make sense to you? Do you think? Wait until phase C for that to happen. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I I'd usually say 26th more B phase division. It's like, for example, you, you can only get your tanks in either A or B phase. You have no C phase cards. But maybe he just has all the C phase infantry, and he's just gonna red army hurrah charge through the German front lines once the 20 minute mark hits. I guess I'm a little bit curious to see how, well, the interplay, really. Mm -hmm. Mickey is facing off against a rather, let's say, underwhelming Kamakuroski early on, especially the 26th. Mm -hmm. But 29th against the 78th, how's that going to play out? Ooh, that is... I mean, it's probably going to be a good matchup for Water, considering that with the 78th, you do actually have heavy anti-tank guns. Yet you can use the kill those pesky IA2, IS-2s. But I'm having a f I feel like it's going to be pretty even, Stevens, up and off. I think the real main push is going to come down south, whether Mickey or not does some sort of crazy 20 of Panzer breakthrough with Raul, you know, Panzers. Well, one thing I do like we've seen out of Mickey is that he does have an early Verfraumann, which is a very oh. interesting choice. That's, yes. that's uh, really the phase A. That's a phase A naval right there. Yeah, yeah, and it's usually quite rare to see as you only get one per card for an A-phase Rathram, and so you've really got to make it count. So, yeah, I feel like Mickey, he's got he's got the Panthers down south, he's got quite a few of them. I think he's going to try and do some sort of armored spearhead breakthrough, but where is, is the question? True, true. Not really investing in that much in distance infantry either. He's got six Flamenver for squads. Mm-hmm. And that's the bulk of his early forces right there. Other than that, yeah, a couple of MP grants here and there. Nope, more Flamin' River squads in the middle. That's... Yeah, it's rather... Wow, they're going to get try to get super tight here. One air touch trooping, which is kind of bizarre. <laughs> How in the blaze is this supposed to go out? On the, other, on the other side, what are we looking at instead? Lots of dozers. Yeah, a few... I've counted one Peter or squad so far but yeah not for me too much got standard is run from comrade broski for 26 and looking up north and player no is2 just a lot of uh ogon meant cheeky and yeah, there's a lot of infantry from player yeah ogon but cheeky though i mean like that that those guys um how do you think they're gonna they're gonna how do, I, how do you say uh match up it was uh, the SMG troops, if I recall. I, I think you're right on that one as well. But yeah, up north they should be fine. Lots of forest. Yeah, I guess I kind of wonder, what's the worth of really taking that control point and sticking troops inside of that house? Or is it better just to kind of work around it? Uh, just have one dude in the house and try to, for Ogham and Cheeky, try to get everyone else up north in the forest and do some forest plays up here. And we should be getting started. Here we go, finally, and everyone's going everywhere. Well, kind of interesting to me, SU-76 is looking to um, barrage that one control point in the middle. Actually, it's a very good call if you think about it. There's only really one road that you can go towards if you're the Germans trying to control. What is that? They see the attack beacon from Kamar Broski. If you mm. go about slightly to the northwest to get to that forest, it is not easy. You could take any other road besides the one where the SU-76 is now firing. I wonder it's if he's very... going to be dropping smoke. Ooh, yeah, there's a call. You're right, it is smoke. It is smoke. You're so smart, Rang. Yeah, it is. Very interesting call. I wonder if he's using that so he can get his IS-2 up close. It's also very interesting he got a two-star SU-76 out. 
Uh, once again, I believe you can only get one two-star SU-76 per card in A phase, so that's definitely a rather expensive call-in. Well, the LA-7's going after that poor... Go, 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 go! Yeah, no, he's, he's going to go rather quickly here. Ah. <laughs> uh. You know, have you ever seen that wall of DP before? Because I don't think I have. The... Oh, yeah, it's a bike. Yeah. That... Oh, no, no, oh, no, it's just a... I thought it was a bike mortal, but no, it's just the, um... It's a bike recon vehicle. That is... Yeah, I've never seen anyone else ever use that. I mean, he looks comfortable, and don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's... Looks like a fun ride, you know? I mean, that's why you join the army, so you can ride motorcycles. Well, one thing you, you want to do to join the artillery, you join the artillery to pound people flat. Jeez, mm -hmm. good lord. The first uh, real casualties kind of go out. Comrade Broski losing a lot of bros. Um, and it wasn't from diving on those landmines. Instead... Ooh. Early Stug going off to the north? No, it was just an incendiary for a bit. I kind of thought that meant usually it means a kill. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's injuries is just they lose ammunition. They will... Armor crank definitely means your dad, Joe. Yeah, I'd say yeah. that's pretty fair. And no, all the Machiki are the uh, flamethrower troops with the Oh, ashes. okay. There's a small 15-point 15, uh, 15 squad. Yes, sir. Now, yes. Looking, sorry, please go for it. No, this, it's, uh, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of people using like the, the two-man flamethrower squads much more now compared to SD-44. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're pretty good. You know, nice and cheap. Good, good holding forests. And they got flamethrowers. Can you can you really say no to a flamethrower? Especially if it's pointing at you? I don't think so. <laughs> Thankfully, though, we're not really too concerned about robbing a bank or something like that with a flamethrower, <laughs> but uh, I do understand where you're getting at. <sighs> Pardon me, would love to see the PTRS flag change the unit indicator. Because I, yeah. I see that, I think it should be like a, yeah, you know, it's... something. Yeah, it should be an AT rifle. Having it as a panther strike is a bit dumb. Same with like that Reela DP, because that has the same icon as the bike with the mortar on the back. So I think that's, I think that's something that eventually change, because that's yeah, not good. No, it certainly is no bueno. Uh, we have our first copper bomb coming on in, which means that all of these tanks are about to die. Hello, my name is Nanyak B. I killed your father. Prepare to die. And... Whoa. No, no. Defective bomber. Yeah, he dodges out just in the nick of time, really. And that's going to keep uh, Mickey's Panzer Force on the push. Worth Ramon doing... Is that a second Worth Ramon, or did it reload in time? I think it reloaded already, because the last, fire, last okay. one fired about ooh, 90 seconds ago. Yeah, okay, probably reloaded again. Yeah, yep, it's depleted. Yeah, it was, also, it was also a mini barrage. It only did four shots, so... Oh, okay. Uh, but how are things developing so far? Well, Combat Broski and Player. Broski's actually not getting too much of it done, but Player, he is... smacking around Walter and stealing his lunch money. Yeah, he's got the northern town under his control, and he's holding it pretty damn well. The flamethrowers burning the German flamethrower squad before they could come in and use their flamethrowers against the flamethrowers. And all the way up north, our players pushing hard... He's got the T-34 command vehicle coming in. And yeah, it's really both sides using lots of flamethrowers. Indeed he do. Uh, JU-87 in the meantime, though, goes after a command tank in the south, does pick it up, which will allow a lot of the German tanks from Mickey to pour forwards, as will those uh, 251 slash 10 half-tracks. And those guys are pretty devastating on their own. I mean, they have a ton of of HE ammunition. Yeah, that is a really funny move there from Mickey. Using the four-man Felginger army squad with the AT half-tracks as their transport. Something I've never really considered doing, but I guess it's a really good idea because those Felginger armies are only 10 points. So really you're just, you know, getting it so you can have cheap AT gun half-tracks and spam the hell out of them. And it's working really well. The, the, the police guys are going into the town, they're going to be clearing it up and... They got fire support from all these panzers, and this That's is... true, until they allow the guards to get behind them and firing things at them with, like... <laughs> AT rifles. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a... Yeah, this is, this is pretty much Mickey's spearhead push for 5th panzer, and it is... 
going really bloody well. But even as he's doing that, his own allies are getting knocked around. Mm -hmm. God, it's he really... only happening very locally. Yes, I'm sorry? He needs to kill that guard squad. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Gun jammed, loader killed, another half-track goes down, so that's two of the three half-tracks are now dead. Mm -hmm. Where'd that Pioneer squad go? There's a Pioneer squad that was like 50 meters from that house. Are they going in now? And here comes another kill. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> yeah, God's is in a really good spot because he's behind the house, so he has a very tight line of sight. But now he's gonna he's gonna pay a high price. But he got out in the nick of time. I mean yeah, he, he killed a lot, he it. killed a lot is what I meant to say. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, he should be proud for the service he has given to Mother yeah. Russia. Uh, almost as much as that this Katyusha that is to the north, the Katyusha I think is going to fire at that town and I dare say once they do uh, there will be a lot less in the way of hearts, flamethrowers, and rainbows. Mm hmm. Um. Maxim's coming up around this house, this town to the south. It's an interesting call right there. And PTRS is doing their whole thing. And now here's the 9 Yak B to finish what it started. Whoa. <laughs> that wasn't the Yak. No, that was the uh, AT gun. Oh, artillery. Gun. Is this, yeah. I'm huh. surprised that the APCR rounds aren't doing squat here. Yeah, our Panzer IV is going to get out of here. Reave his life. But this is, yeah, good pussy if Mickey, Mickey does manage to take the town under his control. And he's trying to put some pressure along the southern side here. He's probably going to get too far of his little half-track fell ginger army push. I am fascinated to see... We have mortar half-tracks from Mickey. He's got an artillery park set up. And for from getting repaired, or reloaded rather. Um, the mortars are impacting, unfortunately, a little bit long. Had they dropped about ooh, 200 meters or so, they've probably been able to take out the PTRSs. Maybe even made a play for that Maxim. Mm-hmm. Where's that Verfram? Oh, Verfram's gonna fire at the center. I like using a cannon to kill a mosquito, but if yeah. you say so. <laughs> Tracks broken, PTRS, of course, at this point, it's just gonna just tickle this guy to death. Yep. I think it's the mortars that he was firing to the center. Oh, was it? Yeah, I think it's just regular mortars. Okay, the Verfram, I, mean, I think, had it, had it a kill there, but, uh, uh, order there, but alright. Where was it? Well, it hardly seems uh, worth uh, necessary right now. All I know is that if you look at that southern town, all you see is the burning carcasses of tanks, and yep. none of them are Soviet. Yeah, he did He did manage to push, but he took a lot of casualties. Really, at 1AT Ray for knocking out those half tracks was really, really deadly work here yeah, from Comrade. Yes, it was. And those, those things are pretty expensive in, in mass. They're like 30 points each plus 10 points for the infantry at Kamrivium. So, pretty pretty big loss. It really slowed down Mickey's push. And, yeah, it's going to be hard for Mickey to push any further, I think. Unless he gets a bunch of CQC infantry as Comrade. He's uh, he's hiding in the trees. The Verframan is able to go and blow a hole through this Russian-style evacuate that the Feld Gendarmerie. Is that the guy you're talking mm -hmm. about to the east? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was a brilliant strike, but I'm not sure he could really capitalize on that. And he cluster bombed a bunch of infantry, I don't know where I... Maybe I can see a it. Tank, yeah. Well, the Stromaviki move on in, moves on in, and uh, shakes and bakes, that could be really, that could pay <laughs> dividends. It just means to get the southern part of the town and getting that command point on the uh, control that Mickey is bringing in the Panthers to try and secure it. Oh, good. The PTRS just can't just run through and kill everything with their SMGs. Nope. Oh, but the northern town is getting pounded by the... There we go. The Russians are shifting on in. They've taken another control point. Moving northwest along that arterial. They, they cannot be stopped. Yeah, players really pushing hard up north. I mean, it's got... 
this the nice area of his tank dead on his keys holding that forest he should be able to capture the northern hill if he does try to hook around north and he also could hook around down south a little bit to that town you know the water did manage to come in with the stun gonna flame furrows and i think he's gonna take the town under his control you know, it's one of those things that, again, where I just see random dots around the map, I'm like, what, have I, do I know what's behind enemy lines right now? <laughs> the tides keep right turning. Now, the police are trying to go and um, fire back at those guards. They're like, Roxanne! Save me, but um, it's not really going to do anything. <laughs> nope. We have somehow, wait, whoa. The Germans have a plus two? What the hell? Yeah, I think it's really just the middle. They captured all these middle points. That is just and then ridiculous. The town How did that north. happen? Yeah, it's just the middle. It's completely as not much air from either the Russian players. And you see Water and Mickey just has a few infantry just just in the middle, just hanging out. They well, didn't even well, push up. Tom Broski seems to want to be very definitive about removing that option. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Bringing in another, ooh, what would you say, about 150, 170 points of just random infantry all over the place? See, that's Justifiably. It's a lot of guards. It's a lot of guards. And Mickey bringing in the T-34 spam down south. I think he's trying to make a breakthrough over here. And it should work actually rather well. I disagree as a PTRS, oh, therefore yeah. everything shall die. But the T-34 sloped armor. So it will, su it will survive. You realize if the shoe were on the other foot here, <laughs> this would totally be just constant BS. Yep. Oh my gosh, <laughs> turret stuck. Oh, come on, are you freaking kidding me? This is one dude with a with a PTRS. Where well, he did get good side shots early on. I think that's what happened. But the other T-54 is going to return fire. This is one guy. Mm -hmm. The crew is still killed. The turret is still stuck. Thank you. Continue driving west, boys. Get back home. Let's go. Oh yeah, yeah. I am surprised to say the least. Yeah, Mickey, he definitely bring up some infantry and try to capture your southern hill. Uh, there's not really much here from Comrade Broski, just one of Tomachiki and one Stone of Iki. It always sounds so a little kiddish to describe a lot of the Russian infantry, yeah. forgive me. But just like, uh, the Tomachiki, the Stone of Iki. <laughs> the Komowiti. Exactly. <laughs> oh, Kuchi Kuchi Ku. It, it, it's, really, it's really fun to say, the, the <laughs> Russian names. They're really fun. Like I'm practicing for the day I have kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Crack's broken over uh, here in this T-34. Now we have an armored pillbox, which is taking mm -hmm. constant firepower from, yep, that 76 Zis gun. Yeah. It definitely feels like Comrade is definitely bringing more of the high veterancy stuff, it feels. which means he's got the high veteran Zis gun, the high veteran SU-76s, and as you see, our veterancy really does pay off. It definitely seems that way, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Because that was just bang, 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 Panzer or T-34, kaboom. I am fascinated to a certain extent. We have a couple of secondary explosions. Do the buildings eventually just erupt from napalm? Yeah, I just it? saw it. Yeah, yeah, that is... I have no idea what happened, yeah? Because they was... That shouldn't have happened. Nothing shot at it. Maybe, maybe it must be, like... Fire effect. Yeah, well, it's, it's good to know the pioneers are fully vetted up, and they <laughs> ran in there, and they got nuked by their own side. Yep. Oh, we got cluster bombers coming in. Say goodbye to the town. They, they're firebombing Dresden, boys. And wow. yeah, I think he's just trying to do blind fire along the road to see if there's any tanks yet. But as we're seeing, he's not hitting much, and he does respond in kind with the Yank Nine fighters. But Mickey does have the anti-aircraft out, anti-aircraft anti units. Can we just note how almost beautiful it is to be like, okay, we have entire wings of aircraft flying back and forth. Yeah, I really do. I really do like that. 
about SD too, just the sheer number of stuff. Yes. I, I do I do like the increased scale of the game. It's not too much where it's completely unmanageable. But yeah, like seeing huge aerial fights happening in the sky is awesome. It's it's bloody awesome. Meanwhile I'm having flashbacks to uh bridge too far as this Plum and Verfer squad down to the south goes up after the Ultima Cheeky. Oh yeah. <laughs> Seven guys hiding behind that house, <laughs> tending to their fallen. If you zoom in on the Ultima Cheeky, they're really close together. Yes, I mean, and they really are. They're, they're, they're like picking over the brethren's corpses. Guys, you're not vultures. Get away from them. <laughs> Let them rest. Yeah, jeez. Other than that, though, uh, we have a KV-85 nice and close. We're going to destroy this T-3442 in one shot, mm -hmm. and there we go. Another Junker 87, he's lining himself up slowly to hit that IS-2, and why shouldn't he? I think it's probably a pretty good idea. Um, we are not even into phase C yet, so... I don't know. I, th I, I, I almost want to hope that the Russians can get some, you know, oomph here. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It feels like, the thing is, Comrade Brucey has that juggernaut income. So he's been having a pretty hard time defending against Mickey A phase, B phase, push for of Panzer. So I'm expecting when C phase hit, Comrade would just bring, you know, release the hounds, bring in everything, and try to push back Mickey. At the same time, Mickey does have a pretty good defensive position, and now the IS-2 boy to Stalin on the field. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I think it's going to be a bit tough. As Mickey just has really good positions. He's got the southern hill. He's got the, the southern middle town. Really good defensible spots. Yes, he does. That's Pioneer DP. He's going to see the Ultima Cheeky. The Ultima Cheeky are going to be out of range. They can't see a whole lot. They're going to come out. And Flamin Perfect Squad. Engage. Engage. Hello. Oh, the, the, the after Michiki's Oof. charger and manages the rest of flame for a troop before it does too much damage. Yes, it does. I feel like I'm getting. I, I hear machine gun fire. I hear cannon fire, and I start moving around trying to uh, discover where a lot of where it's coming from. The second I get there, the entire engagement's over. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of that is actually just like the map ambient sound, mm -hmm. which is kind of on, on the uh, autobahn map. You can hear like Katusas going off, and it completely throws you off when you're playing. You're like, "Oh God, I'm being Katusa striked. Where is it?" And then you look, "Oh, oh, it's it's just the map ambience." Well, I'm happy that works for you. I figure that in the meantime, I kind of get freaked out because, again, like you said, you hear that. I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't see the contrails. I don't see mm -hmm. anything. I don't think ambience. I think to myself. My nerves are going to be shot after this. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think here we can. I think it's ready to turn off any options. Well, I can say that you're having another freaking car carpet bomb of that town. But this time, it's actually tanks here to hit, and he misses. I don't know how in you know, holy or unholy name, he's been so inaccurate that time. Yeah, I, I don't know what you think his line of sight. Yeah, he doesn't really have many recon units nearby. I've, uh, yeah, it definitely seems like he's just Hail Mary and all the sorts because he's blind as the bat. Which is weird because he has a Snipiri that's just behind enemy lines. I figure if he just moves it forward, you know, it, it is a, a thousand yards or so, but a thousand meters rather, but should be able to kind of move up. Yeah. Get LOS. He's got enough tanks there, good god. But it is 1410. Uh, the Russians are staring defeat straight in the eyes. Uh, they are slowly reducing that town. Mm -hmm. Taking quite a bit of time. And I'm a little concerned, actually, because we have these P3 and these P4s on this hill able to engage the KV-85s as he moves forward. Oh, damn, yeah. That's a lovely spot, yeah. It's, it's quite crazy always having to take into account 
units on the hills. Because you can never, you, you never, you never think about it. But goddamn, you, you have huge coverage when you're on top of a bloody hill. Well, because we're so used to Bokaj country, mm -hmm. everything being lowlands and nonsense. But he's uh, taking some casualties, yo. Staying on that hill. True. True, he is. But again, at this point, they have to go and just blow them up. They don't have to actually win. They just have to slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, time. Not be coming after the P the P fours, and I dare say someone is. Well, he got the bombs off. Let's see what it actually does. These Yak Nine Bs—they've been defective this game. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really working that well. I'm quite surprised. I don't think it has anything to do with veteran sheen because, you know, I don't think you can highly train a cluster bomb. Well, you can, but you can only do it once. <laughs> Which makes it a very ineffective training program. It's like it's like it's like oh, it's like the bloody Monty Python sketch with the Suicide Scotman. Oh, I've I seen Daffy Duck, but fair enough. Yeah, Monty Python's certainly true, too. It's been a long time since I've actually watched that, though. The Suicide Scotsman? Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of, uh, like, a Scottish uh, suicide division, and they're uh, doing training, and they jump off a castle rule, but they actually need them for, like... Uh, that, that's pretty <laughs> much the scare. I don't want to explain the whole bloody thing. <laughs> okay. It's like when you have to, like, explain a joke. I am I understand. I'll, I understand. And now the cluster bombs aren't even hitting actual... Yeah. Whoa. I think Comrade Broski's beginning to fall apart. I think he is just shocked and awed that his tanks and his planes have not done the kind of damage he's needed to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, like I said before, Mickey just managed to get into good positions, and even though he has a Rika C phase over, over Comrade Broski, he just has... Lovely position, and IS2 is such a pain in the ass to deal with. Speaking in the north, we do have a naval buffer strike and buffer armor strikes going after some of these behind, you know, the front line stuff. For some reason, we had an IS2 chilling on back here by the supply truck. I didn't think he was actually Winchester in any ammunition. Uh, but either way, I am loving all these artillery positions that Walter has lifted on out. He's got. 120 mil mortars all over the place. He's got naval warfare <laughs> stacked around. It's extremely it's... spread out. Yeah, but like we've been saying though, this like you have to do that consistently. Yeah, it's it's a very good idea. The one problem is though is that you have to. It's much more micro intensive as he needs to start moving his supply trucks around to refill his neighbor offers. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to get counter batteried anytime soon. That does not seem likely. No. Yeah, it's a real, real meat grinder up and all. Both sides is throwing in everything in such a dense area. I mean, you've got stern pioneers and after Machikis just going at it in the forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just absolutely nuts. And not an officer to be found. <laughs> That's not true. We have those UPR guys um, running back to the east, but another, I want to call it Katusha Barrage, takes him out. Yeah, direct so. hit. Again, I want to go and and complain about the artillery for the Germans in this particular map, but no, it's been kind of on point, especially for Walter. But Walter, we kind of expect that from him. Yeah, yeah, he's just... I mean, he is playing the 78th, which is a pretty... pretty, pretty he can play pretty heavy artillery rise, and I really just like how he's using these neighbor as It's just been a very consistent pressure. Mm-hmm. I am also continually surprised that we have as much off-map artillery being called in as we do. Mickey's got another 220, um... I don't even know the BEO, but the, uh, Observer coming on in. Don't think it's going to do a ton of damage. Like you and I talked about last cast, I don't think the off-map call-ins are really quite as impactful as they used to be. Yeah. I don't know if that's a scale of the area over the barrage or what it is. I think it's both. I think, I th I think it's both. Which is honestly probably a good thing, to be honest. Sure. I mean, off map, it was it was all all right. Uh, there probably won't be anything like crazy naval batteries in this game. We'll probably get uh, some German rear infantry division will probably have some sort of Carl like, Gustav. Yeah, like Carl Gustav or some some nonsense like that. But yeah, yeah, it's really all about on map artillery now.
So so far, we don't know. Maybe some division will have something really goddamn crazy. That is entirely possible. Now the Ju one eighty eight. We've seen this guy come out a couple of times here, and he might find himself riding in green fields with the sun on his face as every Yak Nine known to mankind comes <laughs> after him. <laughs> and a Boston for good measure. Yep, he went down. But it doesn't matter. I mean, the Germans, good lord, they somehow... Again, I blinked one time, they were down, what, like, 14-11, and then they were up 16. Oh, God. This just yeah. snuck up on us completely. They just win somehow. I had no idea how that happened. They... They managed to get the control points in the middle, and it managed to get both towns, which are pretty valuable areas. I think you and I were talking in a very, very different direction on that one, but that's very true, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can definitely see Walter and Mickey. Walter gets pounded, has very few kills, lots of losses, and yet still pulls out a victory in the north. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but you know what? That just goes to show you can't just have kills. you got to actually take that territory. Yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. I mean, looking at kills on the kill list... 45 mil doing... Pre yeah, always these 45 mils always do surprisingly well, knocking out one, two, three stugs. Which you wouldn't expect from a pop gun, but the Russians know how to make a good pop gun. Indeed. I'm actually kind of surprised about that myself. Um, and picking up a couple of infantry squads as well. Half-track. I yeah, mean, that's... that's... that's Hating myself off and then some. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Knocking at losses. Yeah, nothing too much. Once again, yeah. we've lost this tab. We're only seeing half the picture. True. True. And again, Walter is not exactly taking, you know, making a lot of kills himself, but he's taking the territory. So he's mm -hmm. playing strategically. But in any case, well done. Um, I really thought the Germans were on the ropes there. And then again, we turn around blink and, um, well, the Third Reich rises again. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, it was just a really good push in the south. That whole fail gender army with, with the half tracks is definitely an interesting choice. I've never seen anyone do that. So, cool. maybe uh, maybe that's a new, a new meta. Maybe yeah, that's a, a different idea, a way to approach. Either way, yeah, you could probably do like the same thing with uh, like NKVD scrotch, like the ten point scrotch with fifty cow half track. Nah, uh, they don't have that. Never mind. But I know it's a cool, uh, cool strategy. Sounds pretty darn solid. But already, yeah. um. In that particular case, uh, I think, right, do we have any other thoughts here? No. Okay, folks, well, you guys are fantastic. Uh, we always like having you come in here. I guess we'll see you all next time. I'm Connor Mulwark. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.